Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today we're going to open up the world's heaviest electric unicycle. So let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. First up, big thanks to myewheel.com for providing me this wheel for testing purposes. If you want to get a wheel like that or any other wheel in Europe, feel free to use my links and coupon codes below. And yes, the Bigode EX20S is a huge wheel. It's the heaviest now on the market at around 50 kilograms of weight, a 3600 watt hour battery and suspension. But does the weight mean also quality? Well, this is what we're going to find out in this video. First, I'm going to detach the lower pad, which is meant for jumping and stability. And I also have a nice dust outline, so I know where to place it later. It's placed with double-sided tape, so I'm not the biggest fan of that and not really nice to reuse. But in general, it's a good pad. I love to see good padding right out of the box because you, then you're not required to buy some custom 3D pads. The top pad is mounted more nicely with two beefy hex screws, which have also spacers behind. I like this top pad a lot because you can adjust it easily. The material is rather squishy, but the edges are maybe a bit too sharp. It's best to ride this EUC with knee pads. After riding this EUC without proper shin guards, I did have a small bruise on my shin. But with that said, yeah, I think still a good job here, Bigode. Removing the side pad does reveal something that I don't like that much though. You can see the battery wires which go to the main controller or motherboard of the wheel. And when you ride on it you see I think that your legs are pressing against that and I don't know how durable this would be. Additionally there should be some plastic to cover that up. I think that they're just too exposed and too easy to damage. Same thing applies to the phase wire which goes along the suspension bracket in the middle. But going back to things I like is the exoskeleton and the screw selection on this EUC. They're all stainless, nothing of those parts will rust except for maybe bearings, but uh, we'll see about that. And the front light is also adjustable, which is great because some riders like to have their EUCs calibrated in different ways. Some screws were missing out of the box though. We checked with a magnet for those steel parts and we couldn't find anything except for the bearings in the rear shock. So really forward thinking, good choice here Bigode. I'm really surprised how Bigode went from UCs made out of plastic to a construction which looks quite solid actually, well thought out and with additional suspension. It's really a lot of R&D that seems to go into those wheels nowadays. Now it's time to take off the pedals and there are two screws on each end of the pedal and a additional screw which holds the rod in place so the pedals don't flop down if they're folded up. In every teardown video I keep praising Bigode pedals and here it is no different. The Bigode Honeycomb pedals are big, spacious, um, they have nice bicycle or mountain bike studs and their angle is also adjustable uh, just with a set of four screws. Uh, the additional mount here is a mount for the Shredlite SLFX. Now we will proceed to simulate a tire change and for that we will remove those small brackets which are mounted with Phillips head screws, metal into metal. and we will deflate the air shock. <laughs> I told you there might be something inside. Naughty, naughty Begode, naughty. So yeah, that's something we didn't expect and my God, why did I try it a second time? So important uh, note for you guys. <laughs> Make sure to keep your Bigode X20 upright. If you want to release pressure from the shock. Anyways, with that done, we can proceed to unscrew four pretty beefy hex screws on the left side on the wheel, which connect the motor to the suspension bracket. They are also covered with Loctite, so that's good. And then we can unscrew three of the same type screws on the other side. Not sure how durable this asymmetry is, but it's there because the motor wire goes into the motor on this side. We also unscrewed this front right battery pack, which gives us access to the motor wire. Exactly the same story as on the Bigode Master. So here all you will need to do is to remove this screw. And there's a spacer here and you can pull out the tire 
with the motor wire still connected and it goes right through here. It's a bit janky here. But then on the other side is also a spacer, so it's also an easy tire change, like on the Master. Compared to S22 and Master, there's less mud guards though. I don't think this, um, this fan is waterproof. I just don't like the fact that there's like no mud guard. Like, if you will have water, I mean, or dirt spraying, it goes right on the heatsink. On a heatsink? On the lights. Like wires, it's... I should have put a mud oh, guard. It's, it's... Yeah, this wheel doesn't have any IP rating and you will see more issues regarding riding in the rain a bit later. But going back to the tire change is still great. And one easy tip to bring back the spacer in and position it nicely is to remove one more front or tail battery pack to just make the access a bit easier. This is the only tricky part you'll have when changing a tire on this EUC. Suspension assembly is better than on the Master, seems like it. Everything is stiff. And in general, this wheel is extremely beefy. So I think that especially for heavy riders with the hollow motor, with the additional beefiness of the frame, of the suspension, yeah, I think it will fare well. And it definitely works a lot smoother than the S22 and maybe even smoother than the Master. That's even better than the Master, I think. And this is everything is stiff. We can also set up the rebound. <laughs> the same, almost. With the maximum rebound? <laughs> Looks the same. But the wheel with its weight and no additional easy grab handle is very difficult to lift up. Now let's talk a bit more about the electrical system and happily this new Bigot charger does have anti-spark protection. Nothing. But if we use a different charger, we can still notice that the charge port is hot. That shouldn't be there and every other EUC manufacturer has that figured out. Now it's time to remove the whole upper panel, which is a integrated seat and this new type of squishy material. I like that a lot because it prevents the EUC from uh, softer falls to get like scratched and dinged up. But underneath that you have still a layer of plastic or metal for the stronger impact. I like that. Unscrewing six more Phillips head screws reveals a small hub. There is a bit of dust inside, so stuff gets in. There's no seal around. As said, not water resistant. In this hub we can find four XT90 connectors with communication wires, a 120 amp fuse, hopefully it would blow if there would be a short circuit on the board or in the batteries, a 15 amp fuse for charging, the rated max charge is 10 amps according to Bigode, and a XT60 plug which connects all of the batteries which are in parallel to the board. Really peculiar to use the weakest connector for the biggest amount of current. Before we get to the motherboard itself, let's take a look at the battery packs. So you can see here I have this because I already damaged it before. Focus. And here also, here, this is like quite easy to damage. see what it is from the inside. We need to remove eight Phillips head screws to take the lid off. So we have like solid silicone here. Oh, okay. That's from all sides. So we have plastic, which is good. And usual Godway stuff. And then we have the battery. Oh, no, forget, like, just push it out. Yes, we can. Oh, wow, look, mm -hmm. better. Protection against mechanical damage is pretty high, but there is no hydro isolation for the battery box, just for the battery pack itself. But that's so much padding, that's nice. Mm -hmm. We have to still check what's mm -hmm. the battery inside. The 21700 cells are LG M50 LTs. Although better spec-wise than the M50Ts, I gotta say that I'm not a fan of those and pretty much all of the Bigo fires were with LG batteries. So I would really like to see Samsung here's or some high discharge cells. The casing is definitely a lot better than on the Master. We have some thicker metal. And sometimes, if you need it, you can get more cowbell.
Now going back to the motherboard area, we have two buttons there, one for the lift switch, one for the power on and off, and a beeper. So here's the beeper, it's broken. Yeah, it's beeper, like, just construct with the uh, piece of ceramics, and this, like, diaphragma to make it louder, and just, like, vibrating with the, like, special frequency, and then, like, to make it louder, and it must, and it was just glued on, with the silicon, and it's, like, unglued by itself, we need to glue it back to make it work. Once we repaired it, the beeper is very well audible and the is good. The top cover is just mounted with clips, no screws there, and underneath we can see a metal sort of swimming pool for the motherboard. And here it's just a standard Gotway 100 volt motherboard. Actually, the power output is very low here. Bigode was telling me that it is for safety, but for example, the Hero is a lot more powerful, so... I don't know why precisely they did such a limitation. You know, wait for the full review to see about that. But other than that, the wheel runs pretty cool. I like the radiator. You can see the phase wires here. Everything is pretty box standard Gotway. And there is no seal for this area too. And one thing, of course, that I have to mention is that there is no communication between the batteries and the controller and the BMS. So... I wish that Bigode would invest more money R&D into their safety, into a smart BMS, better waterproofing, into things that we as writers have been complaining about for years. And I think that safety is the biggest thing that would hold me back before purchasing such a EUC, especially on those battery packs. Nevertheless, I'm happy that the passive cell balancing is here and definitely in the build quality department and the suspension Bigode has done some great work. The trolley handle mount is a bit more durable now with those screws with inserts, but one locking mechanism still managed to break, so I wish that would be more durable and the trolley handle should be made out of metal. And this pretty much concludes the teardown of the Bigode EX20S. What do you think about this wheel? Would you add anything to this teardown? Let me know in the comments. And if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.